All right. I will go to go. Um, good evening, everyone. And uh, this evening, we are um, live on Ideal Med Health um, with um, 30 minutes on Ideal Med Health. And this evening, we are with um, Mr. Victor, a guest uh, from Lagos, and uh, we'll be discussing obesity in children. Uh, but before we go on, I would like you to please um, run down to our Facebook page and follow us if you're not following us. Um, and also run down to our Instagram page also and follow us if you're not following us. And also our YouTube uh, channel, which is um, Ideal Med Health. Go down there and follow us so that you can get notifications of... Um, our videos whenever we want to go live or whenever we upload our video all right so this evening we have with us um mr victor and i'm osuji ebuka i'm osuji ebenezer chuku ebuka so we have with us um mr victor mr victor is um uh he's a phd student at the university of lagos um an exercise physiologist and, and also, he owns uh, the Ademolat um, Victor TV on YouTube with a lot and lot of subscribers there. You can also go onto that um, channel and uh, hit it up and subscribe to his uh, YouTube channel because there he has a lot of content on health, sports, and whatever you can think of. Just go down there and see for yourself. Mr. Victor, good evening. And how is Lagos today? Uh, good evening, Mr. Ebuka. It's nice to be on ID Med Earth. Um, Lagos is doing very good. Hope you're doing good as well. Yeah, we're fine here. We're fine here. Thank you for uh, coming up uh, to ID Med Health with us. Um, so let's go straight to the business for the day. We are very sorry for uh, the little delay we experienced before we started. But then um, going ahead, uh, Today we're talking about obesity in children. So, Mr. Victor, what can you tell us about obesity? First of all, let's know what obesity is. Well, uh, generally, obesity is a complex health issue, and uh, it occurs when an individual's weight or an individual is actually above the normal an LD weight for his or our age and height. Okay. So basically it's a ratio to check your weight and height and as well your age. Okay. So of course, child obesity, uh, which is the main area for discussion today, is a serious health concern right now. It's actually, it's actually a global epidemic. Okay. We have lots of children suffering from childhood obesity. Um, actually, statistics from the World Health Organization shows that about 39 million children under the age of five, as early as the, below the age of five, okay. are actually overweight and obese. That was the latest statistics in 2016 before the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, in Africa, um, this number has actually increased by about 25% from year 2000 to year 2020, just before the lockdown. So as you can see, there's, a, uh, there's an increase in this trend. And it shows that this issue needs to be addressed. Because if it is not, um, this problem will continue to persist. Okay. As it stands right now, one in three children are actually overweight and obese when they leave primary school. And um, this is a very big concern to everyone in the country because you find that at the end of the day, they grow up to be adults who are actually obese and overweight because most people or most children at that stage do not reverse and grow back to normal weight. They continue with that lifestyle. And um, this comes with plenty health issues, both physically and psychologically to them. For example, um, one typical, one common one that we see in movies or we see around us, 
to growing up in, in schools in Nigeria is um, bullying. It's very common. And uh, yeah. most children, of course, tend to bully. Yeah, uh, they tend to bully their classmates who are actually overweight or obese. And um, this actually could influence their self-esteem and uh, just make them go deeper into, into the aspect. As well, there are some also, there's also some um, physical or some other health um, consequences of being overweight and obese for these children. Uh, they could start to have high blood pressure at a very early age. They could also develop or have high cholesterol, you know. Okay. And uh, all of this increases the chances of getting coronary heart diseases when they grow older. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's I'm, just, I'm just going to say it's a major health concern right now. And of course, the uh, study also found that uh, children who are actually obese and overweight, they are more likely to be abstained from school as a result of being ill. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that I... Okay. I'm um, practicing right now. All right. As regards um, obesity and overweight in children, as regards the statistics. Okay. So for, from what you've said right now, that means um, whatever be the consequences of um, obesity in children is not really, um, it wouldn't really affect them as it, as it is when they are still um, a child. That is, they're accumulating uh, whatever that would come up later in future when they are adults. Is it what you mean or? Uh, oh, no, uh, yes, it becomes more severe when they are adults. But they might start to experience some of these consequences, these negative health consequences, little by little, even while they are children. You know, I mentioned the psychological effect. Of course, children also still feel the psychological effects of bullying and low self-esteem. And these effects can be seen in children at a very early age. Some, some negative health consequences can also be seen in these children at a very early age, like um, them having higher blood pressure than their peers, them having higher cholesterol than their peers, hmm. and, and the rest. So these are, these are factors that can affect them, um, even from the childhood. But when they grow older, it becomes more severe. And um, yeah, one way of preventing this is actually tackling child obesity before you know they go into adulthood. So from um, we, we, we should assume that obesity in um, children is uh, much more seen in the age of um, five and below. Is, is that all? Do we still have, um, or I, is it that I didn't hear it clearly? Because I heard when you said something like I'm five and below, um, that it is, or is it that yeah. it's, okay, you want to say something? Okay, so the statistics for five and below is just showing that across the world right now, Okay. Even from a very young age, below five, there are about 39 million children are actually overweight or obese. Okay. And of course, this number will not continue to grow as they grow older. So 39 million children hmm. from as below the age of five. Know. But when they get to five to 18, this number actually increases. So we have over 39 million children above five years to 18 who are actually obese and overweight. And in adulthood, the number is way higher. So that means um, I was reading somewhere this um, uh, this um, last week, sorry, and I um, okay. I read up something talking about um, diabetes. Uh, if I'm okay, clear. does it mean that they have nothing to fear about diabetes? Because um, I believe most of the people we know are adults who suffer diabetes. The the little um, percentage of children that suffer uh, suffer diabetes. Uh, those um, is type, diabetes type one. We rarely see um, children suffering from uh, type two diabetes. Does that mean that, um, as far as um, diabetes is concerned, yeah, okay. they are exempted to adulthood? Um, yes. Why they might be exempted to adulthood? They actually have a, a bigger risk of developing type two diabetes when they are adult. And okay. of course, with obesity, of course, uh, now we are seeing that more uh, children are actually developing what we call, what we used to call adult-related diseases before. Okay. That was associated with adults. We now see them in children or in young adults or oh. adolescents, for example. Yeah. So there are some cases of young adolescents who have um, type 2 diabetes, 
but the risk is higher if they are obese. So people between the normal weight and even underweight have a lower chance of having type two diabetes compared to overweight and obese uh, children. Okay. So um, what if um, there are children that are born with um, large bone size and um, large muscles? And sometimes when we, um, uh, of course, I, I, I would come to um, how to measure their uh, measure obesity. But then there are these children that were born with large muscles and bones and all. And yes. are they not going to be mistaken to be obese? Or is that still part of obesity we are talking about? So, okay, for, for measuring obesity in children. Yes. Of course, the most popular method of measuring obesity is using the BMI. Okay. That's the weight to height ratio. Okay. And um, of course, this system can be flawed, although it is still a, it is still utilized because it is, I think, one of the best methods to study a very large population. Okay. But of course, there are some rare cases of individuals that have um, different distribution of weights around the body. And of course, when, when we are talking about obesity and overweight in children, we are not focusing more on the body weight. We are focusing more on the percentage of fat, basically, in the body. You know, mm. uh, one reason why the BMI can be flawed, for example, like you mentioned, is that the BMI is an indirect measure of body fat. Okay. It does not really take into account some other factors like their age, like their mm. sex, like their bone structure, um, their fat distribution around the body. So for example, an individual with built that has more muscle can show up as overweight. Meanwhile, muscle is better than fat because you know muscle help in better um, uh, energy expenditure and of course it helps to even burn more fat. So that's one reason why BMI generally flows, but in a larger population, BMI is always used because on the last scale is one of the cost effective approach to major obesity and overweight. Okay. So um in, in the absence of BMI, because from what you've said it means we shouldn't trust BMI. Uh, so okay. are there other methods that are not um, going to be um uh, wouldn't have any health disadvantage on the children or any um or if there would be any precautions, maybe you should tell us about it. Don't you think so? Um, one, there are different ways to actually measure um, obesity in children. Apart from using the typical BMI, you can also uh, uh, calculate the percentage body fat, um, okay. of course, in children. So, and there are different charts as well that also have different um, ratings for children based on overweight and based on being obese and being overweight. And that takes into account their age. It takes into account their weight and their height. And for each different, for different age categories, we have different um, cutoff points or different check marks for obesity and overweight. So for example, if you call an adult who has a BMI above 30 obese, you will not use that same scale for a child below five or below 10. Mm. You understand? If you call somebody, if, a, if an adult that has a BMI of 23 is normal weight, you will use that same scale for a child below 10 years. So we have, we have standardized scales and um, charts to actually check uh, BMI and obesity, even in children. So one, why, one reason basically, I want to say, one reason why BMI is actually adopted to check overweight and obesity is because it is cost effective and it is better to use for a larger population. However, when BMI was actually introduced at the first at, at the first time, it was it was basically done using um, white um, children, so they didn't take account of different races and different ethnicity. Mm. And so, yeah, that's another factor. But of course, we have different measures for body composition, which can determine being obese or overweight. We have um, we have the BI matching the bioelectric impedance that you can use to check. Or basically, we have underwater weighing. We have other gold standards for checking body composition. But in general, for the larger population, BMI can still be used. Okay. So BMI is still safe. We are, we are, okay. 
Okay. So what do you think are the factors that are, can um, cause this obesity? What are those things that we should avoid or we shouldn't let our children involve in so that they won't be obese? Okay, so this part will actually, will actually stretch out because this is actually the tough questions when it, when, it, when it comes to tackling obesity and overweight in children and even in the larger population. So generally, they recommend that you don't eat too much, you exercise or increase the physical activity level, you reduce sedentary behavior, and uh, make the environment conducive for people not to be overweight and obese. That's a general recommendation. In fact, the first two recommendations for tackling obesity and overweight in children is don't eat too much and exercise. The key person is don't eat too much and exercise. But now the question is, is that enough for children? Uh, not just eating too much and exercising. So um, for example, the current recommendation for children um, is to engage in at least 60 minutes of physical activity per day. And um, of course, eat healthy meal, avoid lots of sugar and uh, fatty foods. But that is not enough. We actually found out that even increasing sedentary behavior, that's use of the screen, use of uh, smartphones, social media, TV, watching movies, all of that has you know, reduced physical activity level among children. And um, this increases the chances of being obese and overweight. So they found out that most children on average, the recommended time to actually spend on the screen, on social media and ETC is actually two hours. But we found out that children nowadays spend on average about seven hours on the screen. And this screen time actually replaces time for physical activity because basically when they're on the screen, they are basically inactive in terms of their, in terms of their movements. They are usually restricted to one particular spot because um, it's like, to, be, to say the fact is it's actually addictive. You know, TikTok, Instagram, um, movies, you know, TV shows, cartoons for children, many of these programs are actually addictive. And you, can, you find out that children can actually sit down for hours watching all of this. And this actually takes away time that is supposed to use to engage in physical activity. So it makes mm -hmm. them more sedentary. And of course, this definitely would make them add more weight. You know, also the eating aspects. But we find out that um, many children nowadays take lots of junk food, you mm -hmm. know, they also take a lot of uh, beverages with sugar and soft drinks and all of that. And this also actually increases their chance of being of getting, getting more weight and being overweight and obese. Mm. Um, there's also a link in the environment as well, because if the environment is not conducive for the children, they would not lose weight. So the environment, for example, giving the child a lot of access to junk food, um, the child always being sedentary because from the house, it goes out to the car or to the school bus, goes to school every morning. In school, does little or no physical activity, sits down in class all through the day. Break time, the schools don't have enough space and equipment and facilities for sports. So the children actually cannot really play in school. And then when they get home, the parents don't allow the children to go out to play. They say, sit down at home, you're not going anywhere, read your book. And uh, even the ones that want the children to go out to play, there's insecurity in some parts of the country, so they're not comfortable allowing their child to go out in the street to play like it was before. You know, most communities don't have recreational parks, they don't have uh, sports centers mm -hmm. where children can actually go to participate in sports. Uh, most of these places have been converted to residential areas, if you're in a city like Lagos, where you don't have space, you don't have enough chance to exercise. And uh, combine all of these factors together, Actually, when you combine all of this, it has negative effects on the child. And uh, this will only make the cases of obesity and overweight increase in our society. And it's a very big concern. It's a very big concern today for us if we don't tackle this problem. Hmm. You know, it's actually something that is that we, we, it's one negative trend that we have, we have seen that's continuing to grow right now. All right. So um, one of my takeaways from this is that um, parents really 
they are playing uh, or they've been playing roles in why their children have been getting obeys because the one that really hit me so hard was the seven hours like it's 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 true that um parents allow their children to spend seven hours on screen and that um isn't really a nice one I, I'm, I'm seeing a question here from someone someone sent in a question to me right now he said um my child uh is chubby can I automatically declare him obeyed because I'm scared? And secondly, he's still asking if it is hereditary because uh, she, rather, is asking if it is hereditary because um, she felt that at a point in their, not at a point in her uh, lineage, um, they all get fat. And she's getting scared already because uh the dad oh sorry the mom um died of um heart attack due to obesity and all so she's getting scared and she wants to know that uh, if this chubby nature of the child means the child is going towards obesity uh, okay do, do you have something to say mr victor Yes, I can. Remember when we talked about BMI not being yeah you know, gold standard yes. for obesity. So if you say the child is chubby, the next question you're going to ask is what's the fat concentration of the child? So mm. the child, child actually have more muscles than fat. Or do you have a very large fat fat percentage? In so the it's child? sorry. So it's possible that someone looks chubby and it's not just fat that is there. Yeah, it's possible someone looks chubby and the person is healthy. But if you have to use the on a wider scale, that's only a very small percentage, you know. And of course, you would definitely know based on the activity your child engaging. Uh, and it can basically, you can, it's very easy to check. Uh, there are different methods to check for, you know, fat concentrations or the percentage of fats in the body. But mm -hmm. one, one uh, from the question that, that was asked, I think one major concern right now is, first off, what is your child activity level like? Okay. Do they engage in at least 60 minutes of activity? physical activity per day, that's one. Do they get good diet? Uh, do they have very low, or do they have the recommended amount of sugar daily? Not too high because we discovered that most people actually have very high, you know, intake of sugar daily. Mm. Does the child also have a reduced screen time, basically? Or is the child very sedentary? And when you, ask, when you ask all of these questions and um, you, you take that into account, you can actually determine if your child is actually chubby. Uh, one thing that I also noticed among people that are chubby is they get tired very easily, mm. you know, because when they work for 30 minutes or 20 minutes, they are already out of breath. So you can do some tests to check, but in general, I think it is easy to know. Then if question about heredity, heredity, I, I mean, um, yes. You can actually, it can be it can, um, obesity and overweight can be inherited, but it can be preventable even okay. after the child is born. And um, even from um, from pregnancy, are, the general recommendation is most people think you eat for two when you're pregnant, but the advice, the, the truth is no, you don't eat for two. Mm. You just eat for yourself alone. However, during the last month of pregnancy, that's when you have to take more food. That's the general recommendation. But from the first seven, first eight months, you just eat for one, that should be sufficient. You also increase your physical activity level because they found out that mothers or women who are pregnant and are obese, they have a higher chance of their child being obese. So mm -hmm. taking the, the constant or the deliberate decision of increasing your activity level during pregnancy if you're active before. And if you're not active, just gradually, not being sedentary, but gradually increasing your activity level little by little would actually help the child. Also, when the child is born, uh, we preach exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months. Okay. And um, if you cannot give exclusive breast milk, don't introduce solid food at least for the child till after six months. That could also help. Um, the child and also increase the activity level of the child. At least make sure the child engage in about 160 180 minutes 
of activity every day, you know, from six months to when they are five, and from when they are five to when they are 18, they can do at least from 60 minutes to several hours of physical activity every day. And if, honestly, if they are consistent with this, the chances of being obese and overweight at adulthood would definitely reduce, you know? One major concern that most people have is there are so many barriers to tackling this problem. So how can I solve this? What can I do to my child if my child is obese or if my child is overweight? How can I help my child fight this obesity? Hmm. Yeah, fight this overweight. You know, apart from eating better, apart from increasing physical activity level, apart of apart from reducing screen time, there's some other things that you can also do. You know, first thing to do is also is to first listen. First, listen and observe the child. You know, listen to some of the children the child is facing um, before you can give recommendations. And if, if the child is too young to see all the problem, you can also, also observe the child's behavior and lifestyle. Very easy to observe as a parent. When you do that, you can introduce some things to increase the ability level, like educational games. Um, you can also purchase some fitness equipment to exercise in the compound or at home. Bicycles, cycle ergometer, some treadmills, if you can afford it. Or you can even do some little cycle training in your small environment or in your small compound, um, you know, daily or weekly or three times a week at least to increase your child activity level. Some also advise joining recreational sports clubs or recreational teams where your child is engaged physically at least to an extent. Some people also preach um, doing some house chores. You know, some house chores can also increase the physical activity level, even for the child, you know. Uh, uh, there's also some people that think religious gathering and social gathering where you dance in church or dance at parties and you move a lot and you're not, you're not just confined indoors two for seven, 30 days in a month or 31 days in a month for 12 months in a year. No, you also have to like go out. You also have to move. Don't just be indoor all through. You can have a schedule to increase your activity level. There's also the community approach where uh, the parents can also help. Don't reward their child with chocolate and sweets every time they do something nice. Also have another healthy aspect to it where the child can actually improve. And school can also help by making sure they have lots of spaces for play. They have lots of facilities for, for play in the school. And they have a large school compound where children can play. Because you know children like to play. Just give them space and give them the facility. They will play during break. Mm. And increase mm. physical activity, uh, physical uh, education in schools. So schools are starting to cut back on physical education. They don't, they don't do the practical anymore. But we have to invest back in practical approach to physical education. Uh, regulatory bodies also have to come into place and um, you know, ensure that these schools follow these things. And children, children are not actually exposed to some of these for LD meals and on LD habits and on LD diets, among, among others. So some of these approaches can be done to actually help the child, you know. And uh, yeah, why not? Um, some people argue that if the tobacco industry can enforce smokers are liable to die on the labeling, and also the and some other also other industries can have regulation because they know that some of these things they take are unhealthy. Mm -hmm. But children, mm -hmm. snacks and food are unhealthy. There should also be clear regulations on it. So they are aware, the parents are aware that what you are giving your child, if you want to give your child eating every day, lots of soda every day, it will have a negative effect on the child when the child grow, grows up in terms of having coronary disease like heart, high blood pressure, you know, diabetes, having um, joint problem when they grow up. So if parents are more aware, I think they can actually make the, the conscious efforts and conscious decision to help the child and throw the child in, like, in the right direction. All right, Mr. Vito, thank you very much. So um, uh, one more question before we go, because our time has really been fast spent. We, we, we promised ourselves okay. that we would stick to 30 minutes here. Uh, so a, a, a question comes up like, OK, we, we've talked about um, exercise uh, for OK, we've talked about um, physical activity basically for children below yeah. five years, but then there is something I keep wondering. Um, most of the children below two years, their, their stock in trade is to sleep. And most of them, are, most especially uh, newborn babies, 
because I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, can, is it possible for newborn babies that have not even started eating anything, they've not even started watching movies, is it even possible for them to be obese? Is there any need to even pay attention to them or do we pay attention to the older ones? And if there is a need to pay attention to them, how do we stop them from doing the things they love doing best, which is sleeping? and redirecting that energy to really get them physically active because i know that younger children sleep almost all the day it's 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 i, I don't know so is there anything or is it that okay right now they're still too young to be stressed so let's let them get to a point where they can now be active and all so i'm really wondering okay first of all i want to say um like i said before you have to ensure exclusive breastfeeding if you can for the first six months. And um, one thing you have to prevent, absolutely prevent, is introducing an healthy diet for your child. From as early as, from birth, in fact, from birth to the grow older, avoid as much as you can on healthy diet. Don't overfeed them. And of course, don't underfeed them as well. But the main thing is don't overfeed them. Make sure they have the right amount of nutrients they need, but don't try to over overfeed them. Uh, for when a child can walk, actually, a child can be physically active. You know, there's some toys that you can that can that will make the children more active. You know, even if the child cannot walk yet, there are some toys, and there's one beautiful one. I know you know the toy where you put the child in, and the child is balanced, and the child can just go around in that toy with the enclosure and that. So there are lots of um equipment for children to increase the activity level. There are lots of toys they play with, and introducing toys to children at the right age at the right uh, month is actually would actually help the child but one thing you have to definitely stop is overfeeding the child mm. if there's any word like that and also not giving the child bad diet not don't put too much sugar in a diet uh, meal you have to of course ensure the child is properly fed as well with the right nutrients so the ch children as young as two can also be physically active at the 60 minutes per day, but there are levels to it. As long as the child can walk, it can be physically active. There are toys that can encourage physical activity among children, and parents can also take that approach for the children. All right, this is okay, Mr. Victor. Um, it's a wonderful one with you this evening, and um, thank you for coming around and um, coming to educate us much more on. Uh, um, obesity in children because like you said it's a big problem it's a big problem and um, we wish um, our parents our parents um, Mr. Victor have said so much more on uh, how we can help our children maintain a very um, healthy habit that can make obesity very far from them um, thank you so much Mr. Victor for coming up on 30 minutes on ID Med Health now, we thank you so much, Mr. Victor. Like I said earlier, he's a PhD student at the University of Lagos and he has made out time to join us this evening and educate us on obesity in children. Thank you, Mr. Victor. And for some of us that have questions and you still think your questions need to be answered uh, because of time, we didn't take the questions. Uh, please, you just send us a message or you drop comments just below uh, this video at the comment section we'll take up your questions and we'll get back to you appropriately after reaching out to mr victor to really do so much justice to those questions thank you mr victor thank you everybody for keeping up time with us this evening thank you so thank you everybody for keeping up time with us this evening I am Osuji Ebenezer Chukwebuka and I'm working with my very senior colleague here who is the CEO of Ideal Med Health. Um, we have Uche Buchi Bweze. Thank you everybody and let's um, see some of the time next week. Not some of the time, of course, we'll see, uh, see us next week. Thank you very much. Thank you very much everybody. Thank you.